Hi guys, welcome back. This is the review for chapter 9, which is all of our statistical data. So we have a set of data here, negative 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, and 8. I just totally randomly made up these numbers. Uh, so let's find the mean. Remember, mean means we're going to add them all up and divide by the number we have. So we're going to have negative 5 plus 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 5 again plus 8, which gives me a total of 23 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers. 23 divided by 9 is going to give me a nice 2.56 if I round to the nearest hundredth. Remember mean means average, so the average of all of these numbers is 2.56. The median is finding the middle number after they're already put in order, which these are put in order for me, so I'm just going to rewrite them down here and I'm going to write them in a different color. So we have negative 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, and 8. So we're going to find the middle number, which if we do that, we cross 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. My middle number is 3. We also sometimes call this Q2 for quartile 2. Okay. Mode is the most frequent number and this is 5 in this case. If this second 5 were not there, then there would be no mode because all the numbers appear more than once. If I had added another 8 here, their mode would be 5 and 8 because there were two sets of 5 and two sets of 8. So there can be more than one mode, there can be no mode, or just one mode. Range, remember, is largest minus the smallest. So we're going to have 8 minus negative 5. Now be careful here because we do have a negative number, so we're subtracting a negative which means we're actually adding, so this is the same as 8 plus 5, which would be 13, which makes sense. There's 13 numbers between negative 5 and a positive 8. Next, they want us to find quartile 1. <clears throat> and since we've already found quartile 2, we can easily, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this here. If my pen will allow, there we go. Okay, we've already found quartile 2. Now, since we've already done that, the 3 is already taken, so we're going to look at the middle half of this data, so boom, boom, and we're between 0 and 1. 0 plus 1 divided by 2 is 1 divided by 2, which is 0 0.5, which would be quartile uh, 1. And if we do the same thing, we'll just use the same numbers here. We're going to be between 5 and 5, which would be 5, which would be our quartile 3. <clears throat> Remember, if our quartile 2 is in between two numbers like this, we would have included the 3 and the 4 on both sides. Okay, just as a little refresher there. Interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1, which in this case would be 5 minus 0 0.5, and 5 minus 0 0.5 is 4.5. Okay, if we were to make a box plot out of this data, we would have the highest and lowest number, which since we're going from negative 5 to 8, I'm just going to count by 2s. Okay, so we'd have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then I'm going to go negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. Okay, my smallest number is negative 5, so I'm going to make my little dash here. My largest number is 8, little dash here. My Q1 was 5, so we're going to make a big dash here. My quartile 2 was um, 3. I'm sorry, this is my Q3, I apologize. This is Q2, and Q1 was 1 half, which would be right here, okay? And then we make a little box with the three big lines, and we make our little whiskers with the little lines, okay? Now remember, 25% of the data is between the smallest number and Q1. Another 25% is between one and Q1 and Q2. Another 25% between Q2 and Q3 and another 25% between Q3 and 4. What this means when they're spread out like this is that there's just a wider range of data between the lowest number and the Q2 than there is between the Q1 and Q2. And that's because if you look at our data, we have kind of a big jump here, and then we have a little bit of a bigger jump here, whereas there's only one number between each of these. So that's why it's a little uh, different scale, okay? Stem and leaf plot. Remember, this is the tens place or anything kind of above the tens place. Sometimes they use it as the one place if all your numbers are decimals. 
but for the most part it's tens place. So we have 5 and 6, we have 11 and 12, 21 and 43. So I know I'm going to have 0 in the tens place, I'm going to have a 1 in the tens place for the 11 and 12, a 2 for the 21. Now I don't have any 30s, but I'm still going to place the 3 there because I know I have a 40. We like to fill in all of the gaps there, we don't like to have a big jump. Next I'm going to put in the actual numbers, so 5 goes here. And 6 also goes here. So this is saying 0, 5 would be 5, and 0, 6 would be 6. 11 and 12. So I already have my 1 here for the tens place. So I'm going to have a 1 here for the 11 and a 2 here for the 12. Again, that's showing I have an 11 and showing that I have a 12. Okay. And then we're going to have our 21. So there's just going to be a 1 after the 2, which represents 21 again. And then 43. There is no 30, we just put our 4 here, which represents our 43. So there's no numbers here. We don't put a 0, because that would represent 30. We just kind of skip it. So there you go. We covered mean, median, mode, range, quartiles, interquartile range, box plots, and stem and leaf plots in this chapter.